So now we're ready to jump right into level five, okay? Um, so the, just like I did with level four, here's the level five breakdown. You can see we have 15 total practices in level five. Uh, five of those practices are primarily procedural or policy-based, and 10 of them are technical, okay? Um, of those 10 that are technical, the majority of them are actually only implementing new capabilities or implementing additional capabilities within existing systems you already have. Uh, whereas a couple of them, three or four of them, actually bring new technical requirements to the table uh, as far as new solutions that you have to have in place to actually um, you know, monitor and administer your environment with these new solutions. And we're going to cover some of those. Uh, well, we're going to cover all of those uh, today. Uh, so you can see that there's not, um, there's not every domain covered here. We only have, uh, what is it, eight, I believe, domains total that are covered um, out of the 17. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's nine domains that don't have a, a level five requirement at all. Uh, so, so access control, audit, and accountability. Uh, the big one here really is the system communication protection and the system and information integrity. That's where the majority of the technical controls come out, um, or about half the technical controls for uh, come out for uh, for level five is in the last two, the last two domains. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into access control. So with access control, we have one uh, AC.5.024, identify and mitigate risk associated with un unidentified wireless access points connecting to the network. Okay, so this one is one of the ones that brings new requirements to the table. Um, we have to have what's known as a wireless intrusion detection system or a wireless intrusion, wireless intrusion prevention system. There's some conversation that this uh, goes beyond just talking about uh, Wi-Fi, that it's actually talking about cellular as well. And so there are cellular intrusion detection systems and in intrusion prevention systems where you can actually scan for cellular hotspots as well. Um, and, you know, so, but that's a little bit, you know, a little bit more iffy. What we know is in here is about the, the wireless access points that are connecting to your, to your local area network, right? We know we have to, uh, we, we have to monitor for those uh, and put in network protections for those. There's lots of wireless intrusion detection systems and intrusion protection systems out there. You can see a list of them that I, I have here on the slide. Uh, Cisco has, has Meraki and the Adaptive Wireless IPS, Fluke, Airtight, Bastille, WatchGuard. There's lots of solutions out there. Microsoft does not have a specific solution for this. Um, so you're going to have to go to, you know, some other, primarily network providers are the mm -hmm. ones, you know, people that make network solutions, network software, network hardware. They're the ones that typically build these uh, intrusion protection, intrusion detection systems. Um, you can also, if you don't want to go out and buy something from Cisco or Fluke, uh, you can actually go out there and kind of build your own um, if you have the right expertise. Uh, using something like Kali Linux and Raspberry Pi, mm. you can actually go build some of those capabilities on your own. Uh, it does require a, a pretty significant level of experience, um, you know, to be able to do something like that, though. Um, to be honest, though, you have to have pretty good experience to be able to install and run any of these solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a fair amount of knowledge that you that you need to be able to run and, and manage these on a consistent basis. So, uh, so for access control, we're looking at impl implementing a wireless intrusion uh, detection or intrusion prevention system, and, and there's a few solutions for you. As we move on down to the next one, um, audit and accountability. Um, AU.5.055, we want to uh, identify assets that aren't reporting uh, into your SIM solution, essentially, right? And so how do we do that? Well, you already have the solutions that you probably need to be able to do this. The, the challenge is to really, um, you know, find the data and get the solutions identifying when this is happening. Um, so you have, a, you have a SIM solution already. We know we have to have a SIM as part of, you know, level three, and then it's leveraged additionally, you know, more in level four. So we're going to leverage that SIM solution to see if, you know, if events stop from, from you know, from a location or from a, a, an endpoint that should be sending in events. If those stop, you need to alert on that mm -hmm. so that you can go check that out, right? Another way that you can do it is have an agent running on all your endpoints, and it's looking for the, um, for the executable. That, right. it, that it is running to send those logs. So, you know, looking for event viewer, looking for syslog.d, you know, looking for those, the, the, the actual, uh, the, the process that is, you know, should be sending the logs out. And then if you, you know, correlate the information from the endpoint and the correlation, cor and take the information from the SIM, correlate that information together, 
that's how you're going to really be able to see, you know, why has, you know, why is the event data stopped coming from these endpoints? Mm -hmm. So it's less a, an implementation of a new system uh, than it is a, a correlation of data on existing systems that you should already have in place. Gotcha. Okay. So that's really what the audit and accountability level five is about. Okay. Under configuration management, um, this is, this one is a technical requirement. Um, you know, the big piece here is making sure that you have TPM chips. Okay. Um, the trusted um, uh, platform module uh, and, and enabling secure boot capabilities in your laptops, desktops, uh, servers, etc. Um, you you want to make sure that when you're ordering hardware, that you're ordering hardware that has TPM chips in it. Uh, 2.0 is preferred. 1.2 you might be able to get away with, but 1.2 is pretty old. Um, you know, I think uh, I think 2.0 came out in 2015, 2016. So it's been out a, quite a while now. Mm. So any new systems that you're ordering should have TPM 2.0 chips in it in them. Um, and so you want to make sure that when when you get those machines that they're configured for secure boot. Uh, you don't want you know you don't want to have the TPM chip chip and not use it, right? Mm. Uh, you want to make sure you're configuring it. And once you get it configured. Um, if you're going back and, and taking existing systems that, that you haven't used or that you haven't um, had configured previously, you may end up actually having to do a re-image of the, of, the, uh, of the software or a re-image of the, of the laptop, desktop, server, what have you, um, to take advantage of that secure boot and be able to um, hash all the software that is, that is running on that, uh, on that machine. So, um, you know, you also want to enable FIPS, uh, FIPS 140-2 mode, FIPS mode on systems where possible. There are systems out there that simply break with the FIPS mode, you know, turned on though. So that's something that you're going to have to identify and mitigate. Um, you know, for example, one that we run into quite often, especially dealing with small businesses, is QuickBooks. Uh, QuickBooks breaks when you enable FIPS mode. There's just no way around it, right? And so what you have to do is you have to document those challenges, mitigate those challenges by doing other things in the system, um, and, you know, you know, through process, through other technical controls, uh, mitigate the challenges, and uh, and then move forward without, without, that t without that FIPS mode configuration. So... These are, uh, you know, some of the uh, things that you're going to want to look at. But, but that going back to your old systems and implementing uh, the TPM capability, um, that could take some time. And so, and you may have hardware that just isn't TPM capable yet uh, that you need to, you know, you need to change over time, replace over time, which obviously could be very expensive. Mm. All right. Next family that we're going to talk about is incident response. Okay. So we have a couple here um, under incident response. Um, IR.5.108, uh, establish and maintain a cyber incident response team that can investigate an issue physically or virtually at any location within 24 hours, okay? Um, so this is a big one. This isn't a technical control as, mu as much. It's, it's a staffing requirement, really. Um, it's about making sure that um, you have the staff, either on your staff or that you have uh, contracted with, to be able to go out and do these kinds of investigations. Um, you know, they, they typically are going to work either as part of the SOC or in coordination with your SOC. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you've got to make sure that you have uh, that capability to go out and investigate, uh, you know, something within 24 hours. So, you know, if, a, uh, if you have a breach or you have an incident, you know, you have to, you know, kick that, you know, kick that investigation off and get, those, get that team out and involved uh, within a day. Under uh, incident response.5.110, perform unannounced operational exercises to demonstrate technical and procedural responses. Okay, then again, this is a procedural requirement. Um, the technical piece of this is really going to be around, um, you know, it's going to be an extension or leveraging the tool sets that we have in the awareness and training family.4.060, um, which was, is, a, uh, is a level four requirement um, where we were able to implement uh, things like no before or the attack simulator from, from the Office platform, from okay. the Office 365 platform, leverage those capabilities to actually uh, perform unannounced activities against your environment, against your team, against your people, um, so that you know, your incident response team can, can practice, essentially. Yeah, end-to-end end, end practice, not just, right. hey, did, did anybody click on this email? You know, right. it's end-to-end. It's end. Someone did click on the email. How did we handle it after they clicked right. on it's it? It's the whole process, right? Um, it's, 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 it's testing your end users, but it's also testing your, your incident response team, your capability to respond to those potential issues. Um, so, so those tool sets will be used as part of that solution set. Yeah, and, and quite, quite frankly, it's a, it's a level five requirement, but it could almost roll into a level three. Because, um, I mean, you, you do want to consistently practice your policies um, yeah, for... For, for this type of thing. You do, you do. 
Okay, um, another incident response requirement, IR.3.102, uh, using a combination of manual and automated real-time responses to anomalous activities that match incident patterns. So you're looking for patterns in events, in audit logs, those kinds of things. Um, so here we're not really implementing necessarily new solution. Mm -hmm. We're really um, modifying or configuring the existing solutions we have in place, specifically uh, a SIM solution, all right? Um, so we want to have, you know, run books, playbooks in place that say when, when A, B, and C happen, we're going to go do X and Y, mm -hmm. right? And so building all of that out um, and, and from an automated standpoint, but also having manual uh, things that you do um, based on those, those same types of inputs. Um, you know, this can be done with your Sentinel, uh, your Sentinel solution if you are on the Microsoft side using, uh, using Azure Sentinel in, in Azure. Um, if you have Microsoft Defender, ATP, and Intune deployed for your endpoints, you can, um, you know, you can use that as a, as a potential solution. Uh, other tool sets that are out there, just like I talked about, you know, when we were talking about Sims before, you've got lots of Sims out there. You've got, you know, Logarithm, you've got, um, you know, uh, Alien Vault, you know, Silence and Carbon Black are, are other solutions that can help you with this, uh, this kind of capability. Okay. And uh, on the next one is a, our last incident response, IR.5.106. Um, use forensic data uh, gathering, uh, gathering across impacted systems, ensuring secure transfer and protection of forensic data. So this is the one where we do have some additional requirements, some new requirements that we haven't seen before, specifically around uh, the memory for forensics capability. Uh, that's not something that we've been required to do in any of the previous practices. But now, um, you know, while we've been getting logs and security event data through the SIM, right, um, you know, we've got endpoint detection and response in place with, you know, host-based uh, um, host based agents that are sending security information and all of that. You know, if you're in the Microsoft world, you maybe you're using the Microsoft Defender ATP solution there, mm -hmm. right? There are other ones, obviously. Um, but then now we have a requirement to be able to pull memory information. So um, when an attack happens, be able to pull that memory information, um, pull that into a forensic solution, and then analyze that. So those memory, memory forensics tools that are out there, there's, there are lots of memory forensics tools out there. Um, you, you've, got to, you've got to get one or more of those in place for your SOC team mm -hmm. to be able to go out and, and pull that memory dump information and then evaluate, analyze the memory dump information and then tie it together with your SIM information and your EDR solution, your host-based you know, endpoint detection response solution. Look at all of that together in aggregate um, to, uh, to really get a full picture of what happened forensically um, you know, from a, uh, for the system, for the environment. That is not an, you know, an, you know, a, a small undertaking, mm -hmm. you know, that, that takes significant, um, you know, expertise. Uh, there's, there's, you know, obviously an entire industry around out there around forensics. Um, it's not something that every company is going to have on staff for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're looking at going to level five, you have some really big decisions to make about how you want to staff some of these things, because these are not, um, easy requirements uh, mm -hmm. to, to implement. You've got to have some really specialized knowledge in a lot of cases to do this kind of capability. All right, from a recovery standpoint, uh, recovery, like we, like we talked about last time, did not have a level four requirement, but it does have a level five requirement. Um, this one is all about, uh, about your security, uh, your security uh, platform. All right. So ensure information processing facilities meet organizationally defined information security, continuity, redundancy, and availability requirements. Okay. Um, so this is a technical requirement. You want to make sure that every, every environment that you're using meets the, uh, the requirements that you've laid down. Obviously, you have to have the minimum requirements. For example, if you're in a cloud environment, you have to be at minimum federal moderate. Um, if you're not in a cloud environment, if you have your own um, data center, you want to meet you, you want to meet similar standards, right? Um, and another capability that you want to look at implementing is having um, you know backups, res a resilient infrastructure for your security infrastructure. Uh, so firewalls, proxies, IPS, IDS, uh, proxies. Um, SIM solutions, you want to have a resilient infrastructure there. So when you're building those infrastructures out, make sure that you're building them with uh, continuity of operations in mind, with resiliency in mind, uh, that you're not uh, putting a lot of single points of failure out there that, um, you know, if you get attacked and it takes out part of your network, that you don't have the ability to respond because they basically took that